Monday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Osgood. The Diving Bell and the Butterfly has won director Julian Schnabel an Oscar nomination, the chance to stand on the red carpet on Hollywood's biggest night. Schnabel is an artist in more ways than one, as Serena Altschul now shows us. On a giant canvas, it's a small touch, a few delicate strokes by an artist famous for working on a grand scale. When somebody asks me how long did something take, I always say it takes 56 years and five minutes. <laughs> Whether it's on his studio wall or on the big screen, his work is always eye-opening. He's Julian Schnabel, painter turned Oscar-nominated director of The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. I made the movie because I thought it needed to be made, and I didn't think anybody else could do it. I made the movie because my father was terrified of death, and I thought, you know, I need to sort this out. If I could, if I could have helped him, I would have been a good son. Bonjour. The film is based on the true story of French magazine editor Jean-Dominique Bobby, seen here in a 1996 documentary by Jean-Jacques Bonnex. At age 43, Bobby was almost completely paralyzed by a stroke. With his mind otherwise intact, he was trapped, what doctors call locked-in syndrome. Monsieur Bobby. With Mathieu Amalric in the lead role, Schnabel's film illustrates that the diving bell of Bobby's paralyzed body couldn't prevent the butterfly of his imagination from taking flight. By using the one thing he could still control, his left eyelid, Bobby managed to write a best-selling memoir before his death in 1997. A speech therapist, portrayed by Marie-José Croze, helped translate the blinking of his eye into letters, then words, and eventually into a literary marvel. Je viens de m'apercevoir que par mon œil, il y a deux choses qui ne sont pas paralysées. Mon imagination, ma mémoire. To me, this particular story was um the guy was reporting back from a place that nobody had ever reported back from. So he was somewhere in between life and death. And the first third of the film takes place just from his one-eyed perspective. And it's a little uncomfortable to watch, but you bring us right into what he's experiencing. Well, I think you've got to eat the blue plate special if you order it. In order to be free later, you have to have that claustrophobia that he felt. In order for it to work, you needed to be in his body. And once you leave his body and he becomes a butterfly, he can do anything. Je peux imaginer n'importe quoi, n'importe qui, n'importe où. The film is a cinematic tour de force. Perhaps no surprise, considering the director. You're going to come in after you do that. Keep coming, take things away, do whatever. The Brooklyn-born Schnabel, age 56, has been an imposing figure in the art world for more than three decades. La mer. He broke onto the scene, literally, in the late 1970s with oversized canvases covered in shattered dishes. Instilled with the work ethic of his immigrant father, Schnabel was prolific and willing to be promoted. By 1984, a Schnabel painting could command $100,000 or more, but not everyone was impressed. I'm so used to getting attacked all the time, as because I think, you know, if you're a painter, just the way they have, you know, like the name of the, the newspaper in the New York Times is Arts and Leisure. Like, what do Arts and Leisure have to do with each other? <laughs> Nothing. So you people, oh, arts and leisure, okay, that sounds good. It's an oxymoron. 
The fact is, Schnabel's art, like the artist himself, has always been controversial. Even his penchant for wearing pajamas all day has become the stuff of legend. It's a shirt. It's pants. Right. I mean, it's not, but it's really crazy when you see somebody walking down the street in pajamas, they think that you just got out of a mental hospital. Right. And when we had the, the, the first time, um, when my boys were born, born, I was in the maternity ward, <laughs> and I was walking around in my pajamas, and a lady said to me, you're on the wrong floor. I said, no, 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 I'm not, I have these kids. She said, you can't walk around in your pajamas. And some woman that was a painter said, that's Julian Phil, he walks around in his pajamas, it's okay. Of course, on a movie set, it's the director who calls the shots. And in 1996, Julian Schnabel wrote and directed his first film, Basquiat, starring Jeffrey Wright. A fond portrayal of Schnabel's friend and fellow artist, the late Jean-Michel Basquiat. The film was less glowing in its depiction of art critics. Whose words are these? I mean, where do you take them from? I don't know, would you, would you ask like a musician, like would you ask, ask Miles, like where'd you, where'd you get that note from? Hmm. In, uh, when Chris Walken is interviewing uh, Jeffrey Wright, it's more like an assassination than an interview, and we ought to say to young people, thanks, not, why'd you do that? Four years later came Before Night Falls, starring Javier Bardem, and featuring Schnabel's wife, Olatz Lopez Garmendia. And with The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, which earned him Best Director at Cannes, Schnabel has proven he's more than just a painter dabbling in film. But he still credits all those years in the art studio for his willingness to trust his instincts and improvise on the movie set. Does that make your actors crazy? No, first I don't rehearse. Uh, I, they know what they're supposed to do. I believe in them. Uh, I don't want them to do something great and then say, that was really great, can you do that again? So I'm, I try to keep it spontaneous, which is closer to painting, in a way. Actress Marie-José Croze admits that achieving Schnabel's vision demanded camera work that was sometimes too close for comfort. I felt sometimes like, oh my God, you have no place to hide, you're completely exposed. Sometimes it's easier to be naked than be shot like your eyes and your faces and everybody will see exactly what you think exactly what you feel excuse me i have final cut on the movies that i make so you know whatever is good about them or bad about them i'm guilty for everything La mer. And what many have come away feeling is that Julian Schnabel's The Diving Bell and the Butterfly is an inspired work of filmmaking.